Thanks, Clive. The headlines in the southeast today. Wasting time, residents near an illegal tip call for action to clear it up. The general feeling now amongst people is that they're fed up to the back teeth. The Easter break begins with thousands heading off by road, rail, air and sea for the long weekend. We're live at the port of Dover this lunchtime. And it shut its shipbuilding gates 40 years ago. We visit Chatham Dockyard as it marks the anniversary of that closure. Hello, welcome to the programme. I'm Ellie Crissell. Residents living near an illegal industrial-sized waste tip near Borstal are calling for tougher action to get the waste removed. The Environment Agency issued an enforcement notice on the landowner in October, giving him six months to clear the site. That runs out soon, but still the waste remains. Our environment correspondent Yvette Austin has our exclusive report. This is how the illegal waste site near Rochester looks now, and this is how it looked in 2022. On the 9th of October, the Environment Agency gave the landowner John Treby six months to clear this pile of waste from his land. It hasn't happened. We went through a period, as you know, uh, where hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lorries were dumping thousands of tonnes of material in there. We've no idea what is in there, and I think the general feeling now amongst people is that they're fed up to the back teeth. Local residents say the dumping began in earnest some four years ago and what was once a field became a huge mound. In its enforcement notice, the Environment Agency describes it as soils, light shredded waste, as well as waste that's left over after being sorted through a screen. But I've seen other material tipped too. The estimated quantity, nearly 34,500 cubic metres. That's enough to fill nearly 345 double-decker buses. So I've just been walking alongside the site and I have to say there's no sign of any of the rubbish being removed. If anything, there's even more there than when I was here this time last year. The landowner, John Treby, declined an interview, but a spokesman for him said he's a victim of land grab. She said he's not given anyone permission to tip on his land, and this occurred during a time when he was hospitalised for a life-limiting illness and during a time of grief, when he lost his son during a car accident. The local MP says it's not good enough. She's been pushing for more action. What I want now is for the agencies to not sit back, but to keep ploughing on with that enforcement to make sure that that site gets returned to what it was. But also, it should be a message to others that, you know, they can't just wreck parts of our countryside and be left to get away with it. In addition to the enforcement notice from the Environment Agency, Mr Treby has been served with two enforcement notices by Medway Council. He's appealed against them both. The Environment Agency says it doesn't comment on live investigations, but told us it will be reviewing its enforcement response if Mr Treby doesn't comply with the enforcement notice. The deadline is the 9th of April. Yvette Austin, BBC South East Today, Borstal. The Easter getaway has begun with Gatwick Airport expecting its highest number of passengers so far this year over the coming days. The highest number of departures is expected on Sunday. We're being reminded there are also planned engineering works that will affect train services in Kent and Sussex. Meanwhile, delays are also anticipated at the port of Dover, where we are going to head now live this lunchtime because our reporter Chrissy Reedy is there for us. Chrissy, it's looking blowy there. Are we thinking in combination of stormy weather just conditions a <laughs> just a bit and lots of people are going to cause a few problems well, it coincides, of course, Ellie, with a lot of schools across the southeast that are breaking up today. This morning here at Dover, traffic does seem to be moving smoothly, famous last words, uh, but 20,000 cars are expected here over the Easter weekend. Of course, let's not forget last Easter, there were coaches full of kids waiting some 12 to 14 hours. Authorities that say there will not be a repeat of that this year. I spoke to one coach company a short time ago. They say they're keeping everything crossed. The ports have, have given us quite a bit with, with the new procedure. So a driver has an app on his phone, so they scan everybody's passport. So when they get to the, the, the boatyard, it's a, it's, a, it's a one check instead of 
50 or 55 people to be all checked in one go. So the process should be sped up and it should be a lot quicker. So on the roads, there are plans in place, we're being told, to deal with uh, increased traffic, Operation Brock in particular. On the rail, uh, Govia Thameslink that operates Southern and the Gatwick Express say there will be some engineering works, only on a few routes, the most will be running as they should be, so there will be some replacement buses. Uh, I think, as always, really, the advice is check before you travel and hopefully there'll be minimal disruption. Indeed. Well, looks OK at the moment, Chrissy. Don't get blown away, will you? We'll check in with you later. <laughs> <laughs> Police are appealing for witnesses after a 13-year-old boy was hit by a car in Eastbourne. It happened at Hazelwood Avenue yesterday afternoon. He was airlifted to hospital with potentially life-threatening injuries. 40 years ago, this weekend, Chatham Dockyard closed its gates, leaving thousands of people without jobs. Now, much of the site operates as a tourist attraction. Fiona Irving has been speaking to former dockyard workers and those who found a future for this once derelict site. It's 1984, and the Navy's white ensign flies over Chatham's dockyard for the last time. These are the main engines, and um, at the time we were running up the engines, to test all the, For the people uh, who worked on these warships, the, the memories of the closure and, uh, are still painful. Oh, it was dreadful. I mean, some of the worst days of my career, I think. I had to come down and tell my staff, you know, I'm afraid most of you are going to be made redundant and there's nothing we can do about it. After more than 400 years of shipbuilding, HMS Hermione was the last warship to leave these docks in 1983. The dockyard has borne witness to a seafaring nation constantly changing and progressing from sail to steam to nuclear. But keeping the dockyard alive wasn't just about preservation. By 1984, much of the site had fallen into disrepair. This was just a new chapter, part of centuries of evolution. The smithery that once forged anchors now houses national artefacts. The only way it can be preserved is finding new uses for it. You can't preserve it just in aspic and open the doors in the morning and just let people wander around an 88 site with 100 buildings. Um, they, each of those buildings has to work and earn its living if it's going to be preserved, and that's where we've got to 40 years on. The dockyard's still at the heart of Medway, and that heart is still beating. Fiona Irving, BBC South East Today, the historic dockyard in Chatham. And we'll be live in our 6.30 programme tonight from the historic dockyard in Chatham with much, much more on this. Time now for a look at the weather. John Hammond joins me. So Chrissy nearly got blown into the <laughs> sea before, didn't she? She sure <laughs> did. Uh, yeah, and it's going to stay pretty blowy, uh, not only in Dover, but for the rest of us, actually. And it's been pretty wet this morning as well, hasn't it? The rain has swept through. So some brighter skies for a time this afternoon, though there will be further blustery showers rattling in on that strengthening. We're not feeling all that pleasant, despite some sunshine. But batten down the hatches because tonight it gets even windier, hence the warning from the Met Office. Pretty choppy seas and some really squally showers uh, pushing in across all areas. It won't last all that long because the wind that moves through quite quickly, but you get the idea it'll be quite a disturbed night out there. Uh, gusts of well over 50 miles an hour, big waves crashing onto the shoreline. Now through tomorrow, gradually the strongest of the winds will subside. Still a blowy old day and still a few showers, but uh, I'm pretty optimistic that most of us actually will see some decent sunshine. For good Friday. Uh, winds coming up from the southwest, a milder direction, and it will be milder as we head through this Easter weekend, not a washout. Some headlines are suggesting that, but I think through Saturday and Sunday, plenty of dry weather. Get out and enjoy it while you can, because Easter Monday is not looking clever, and through the rest of next week as well, plenty of rain around, I'm afraid. So egg hunt Saturday and Sunday. Definitely not. Got Monday. it. Okay, thank you, John. That's it from us. I'm back at 6.30. Bye-bye.